Welcome to another exciting episode of the Cricket Tales. In the world of cricket, there have been many celebrated rivalries. Fiery fast bowlers against masterful batsmen, iconic teams clashing on the hallowed grounds, the unforgettable battles eased into the annals of sports history. But amidst these legendary duels, one encounter remains etched in our memories: the epic face-off between Sachin Tendulkar and Henry Olonga during the Coca-Cola Cup. The year was 1998. During a tri series involving India, Zimbabwe and Sri Lanka, the world witnessed an unforgettable moment. Sachin Tendulkar's furious onslaught against Zimbabwe's Henry Olonga, setting a target of 197, Olonga took the new ball against the master batsman. And what happened next? Wait. I should not just give the climax, right? Let's go to the back story. Before starting, just a small message If you like my content please subscribe to my channel so that I can add more stories. Thank you. The day was 31st January 1995. Zimbabwe witnessed a historical moment when Henry Olonga, the first black person, was set to play for their international team. His selection caused a wave in Zimbabwean cricket. Can you believe that the country with more than 99% black population, Henry became the first person to play for the Zimbabwean cricket team. The 18-year-old Henry, who faced the reigning world champion Pakistan in his debut match, the entire cricketing world was waiting, eager to see what this young talent had to offer. He started with a fairy tale, picking up a wicket in his very first over. However, an unfortunate injury forced him to sit out for the rest of the match. Zimbabwe, against all odds, went on to defeat Pakistan and secure their first international test win. But soon after. Henry Olonga found himself embroiled in throwing charges leading to a ban from international cricket. However, despite his troubles, he was hailed as the poster boy of Zimbabwe, a talent with immense potential. Olonga was asked to correct his bowling action at the Premier Institute outside Zimbabwe. He chose India, specifically the MRF Foundation in Chennai, led by Australian legend Dennis Lilly. Meanwhile on the other side of the cricketing spectrum Sachin Tendulkar was ascending to the peak of greatness the little master's bat waved a magical symphony as he scored centuries against the best bowlers of his time his averages soared and records tumbled in his wake Sachin's journey was marked by triumphs and adorations from cricket fans worldwide away from his homeland as Olonga worked tirelessly to correct his bowling the crowd cheered Sachin Sachin in the background But after returning back to the team, Henry Olonga went only downhill. Sometimes injury, sometimes lack in form, but very inconsistent bowler. He had the potential to outclass any batsman in his day, but when it's not his day, he was simply pathetic. Zimbabwe's team kept on rising, but Henry's name kept on falling. Then come the year 1998. Sachin's brilliance was full on a display as he scored two centuries against Australia and three in the finals of a multinational tournament. Olonga was out due to injury and India beat Zimbabwe very badly in the ODI series. In the test matches, Zimbabwe, desperate to counter Sachin, turned to injury-driven Henry Olonga. Olonga, despite being in pain, delivered an exceptional performance while batting With a groin muscle pain and sore back, he rescued Zimbabwe with a crucial 33-run partnership for the ninth wicket. And while bowling, he ran through the entire Indian batting lineup. His remarkable display led to Zimbabwe's second international test win. In the Coca-Cola Cup, Zimbabwe met world champion Sri Lanka and India. Shockingly, Zimbabwe defeated Sri Lanka twice in the tournament, securing a place in the finals alongside India. In the final group stage match against India, Olonga returned from injury to face the Indian batting lineup. India was given a target of 206 and Olonga was roaring to perform. In the second ball of his first over, he took Ganguly. In the next over, he took Dravid's wicket and in the third over, he took Sachin's wicket. But alas, it was a no ball. In response, Olonga threw a short ball and then this wild celebration he took the wicket of the best in form batsman in the world he was young pumped up but he didn't knew what his wild celebration will lead to 
Sachin was furious by seeing this celebration. Olonga went on to secure a four wicket haul, dismissing Dravid, Ganguly, Sachin and Jadeja. India's inning ended in disappointment, getting bowled out and losing the match by 13 runs. 36 hours till the tournament finals. According to Sachin, this was the longest 36 hours of his life. Just after his dismissal, Sachin went to the nets to practice short balls. Sachin said in his interview years later, that short ball wake me up for the whole night. I just wanted revenge. 36 hours later, they met for the finals. Zimbabwe's strategy was the same. When Sachin comes, give the ball to Olonga. Don't allow Sachin to settle with surprise bounces. Chasing a target of 197, Tendulkar made his intentions against Solonga quite clear from the start. He attacked every ball from Zimbabwean pacer, slashing hard and displaying his frustration. Sachin unleashed his fury against Solonga. In a breathtaking display of batting brilliance, Sachin hit a 4 and a 6 in Solonga's second over. His rage fueled a memorable inning as he scored an astonishing 124 runs of just 92 deliveries. Kolonga, who struggled to contain the storm unleashed by Tendulkar, conceded 50 runs in just 6 overs. India cruised to a 10 wicket victory thanks to Tendulkar's remarkable display of aggression and determination. During his career, Sachin Tendulkar became one of the greatest batsmen in cricketing history. holding numerous records including being the highest run scorer in international cricket his technique focus and ability to handle pressure made him a formidable opponent on any pitch henry olonga on the other hand faced numerous challenges throughout his career despite showing immense promise early on his inability to maintain consistency coupled with various injuries hindered his progress as a world class fast bowler in the years following the encounter with sachin Olonga continued to play for Zimbabwe but struggled to replicate his success. He retired from international cricket in 2003 and later pursued a career in music. Olonga's bold and principled stand against Mugabe regime in Zimbabwe during the 2003 Cricket World Cup where he bowled a black armband as a form of peaceful protest also earned him respect and recognition worldwide.